Good evening. Hello, Tonight, friends. Tonight I'm talking to Professor Heinrich Globnik, arguably the world's leading authority on ants and ant-related behavior. Now, when I say arguably, there is no doubt, not a scintilla of doubt in the world, that I am numero uno in the ant racket. <laughs> there is no one in the world who knows more about ants than yours truly. The ant is my speciality. Absolutely. So what? Hello, ant lovers. Oh, just miss me, camarade. Ant lovers. <laughs> I have been on the TV before. <laughs> So what led you into this particular field? Well, I first got interested in the ant at school. I was a curious child, and I remember asking the teachers a question such as, what is the function of the ant in a capitalist society? <laughs> and basically, I was given the brush off. I get no real answer, so I feel to myself, no one knows the answers to these questions about the ants, and this caused me to drift into the field of ants and learning about the ants and what we can learn from the ants and so I have studied the ants for the last yes. 51 years. Excellent. Indeed. <laughs> Tell me, are there many different categories of ants? Yes, there are three main categories of ants, loosely divided into the big ant, the small <laughs> ant, and then Perhaps the most interesting of all, the medium-sized ant. <laughs> what do ants do? What do ants do? Well, basically, the ant wanders around. A typical ant will wander around for a while, and then he will find some rubbish, some piece of twig or something like that. Then he'll grab hold of it with his mouth, get hold of the twig or the rubbish, wander back to the ant hill, drop it, then wander out again, and go scurrying around for some more rubbish, pick it up, take it back to the ant hill, go wandering out again, find some piece of rubbish, pick it up, go wandering back to the ant hill. And after a bit of wandering for hours and hours, they get a bit sleepy, and sometimes the ant will lie down and fall asleep for a few minutes, and then, as likely as not, some other stupid ant will come along and drink him away back to the nest, mistaking him for rubbish again. <laughs> You make it all sound very random, but isn't an ant hill a very organized society? If your view of an organized society is thousands of ants milling around in corridors, bumping into each other <laughs> with bits of twig and rubbish in their mouth, then I understand why you elected that woman. But in my view, the ant society is a shambles, a complete and utter shambles. So, so, how do ants reproduce? Ah, I thought you'd get onto this. Everywhere in the world I go, always, sex, it rears its head. You want to know about the sex life of the ant. All right, I'll tell you about the sex life of the ant. Basically, it is a shambles. <laughs> One ant will see another ant. And then, for no apparent reason, he will yump on the other end. <laughs> then, having yumped on the end, they will roll around for a little while, yump up each other, without so much as a hello, goodbye, or anything. <laughs> Sometimes they yump on a twig. <laughs> and they seem to have as good a time as they do <laughs> with the other ants. The sex life of the ants is a shambles, in my view. Have you done any behavioral experiments with ants? Oh, yes, of course. I've done much research and behavioral experiments with ants. I have found, for example, if you put an ant in a locked metal box with no light and no food, after several weeks, and this is interesting, after several weeks, the ant will die. <laughs> also, if you feed the ant the equivalent of a bottle of vodka, <laughs> one bottle of vodka and an ant is incapable of operating heavy machinery. <laughs> this is what I have learned about the ant. Well, Professor, I'm sure we could go on all night talking about ants. No, we couldn't. <laughs> he hammered the subject into the ground. <laughs> I have said everything there is to know about the ant, and that is it. Kaput. We could not talk one moment longer. Okay, so uh, how would you sum up your career, Professor? An utter waste of time. <laughs> Professor Globnik, thank you very much. Thank you.